Yeah, so it happens the same time. We're kind of we're kind of jumping out of order. I want to get back. Mimi had her hand up. Um, minus That's a good point, and also we, we need to do that kind of follow-up because there's going to be natural... ...program, because it's, it sounds good, and you guys are, are committed to it, but you don't know. I mean, I've been involved with this for 40 years, so people come and go. We get people, and they come out from... New York and California, someplace like that, they have no clue about anything here. They've got their own ideas, and they don't understand what's been done ahead of them. So that if it's all in writing, it would make us plan on this go about that. We will be documenting the program, hopefully to an excellent degree of specificity that we're aiming for. So you can read it over and tell us. Is the imagery done at the same time every year? So that it's always done in the spring or in the summer or at some point not, in time? Yeah, not necessarily. No. So we have so different 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 uh, time intervals between the imagery. So that would certainly be an issue in Oregon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in terms of what you can see, what uh, occurs. Green <laughs> in the winter, the summer, the fall, right. they're all right. very different. Right, right. We, uh, we strive for um, what we call leaf off photography in the winter time so that we can see the ground surface better, but um, we're not always getting that. So, yeah, we have to make allowances for, for what's available, what we can afford to acquire. Um, sometimes it can be pretty expensive to, to uh, buy it if it's not. <coughs> It's in your hands uh, on the main stem of Mary's River. Pretty well defines that section of the river that is too warm for a cold water fishery and cannot be made into a, a cold water fishery. And, <clears throat> and the headwater streams are cold water fisheries and there are fish there. The warm water fishery uh, stretch in the main stem of Mary's River uh, it may be a good conduit for fish to go in the spring and the fall, but it's not a place where fish can make a very good living during the summer uh, because it cannot be kept below temperatures that are quite inimical to the, to the salmonids. So uh, going to the vegetative cover, then you will be looking for different measures of vegetation for the cold water fishery than you will for the warm water fishery. All streams for productivity need sunlight on the streams uh, in order to grow phytoplankton and so you need to have some kind of a monitoring system that will capture that. And uh, the stream running through the valley is generally considerably below the floodplain and uh, so the root systems for the stream side trees may not reach the erosion boundary of the stream except during flood. And so sampling vegetation is not a simple matter, and I, I recommend...
recommend strongly that you develop some really good protocols for where you sample, measure the south bank differently from the north bank, because the north bank will never shade the stream, and include these critical parameters so that when the D DEQ comes to your picnic, you have something you can really wow them with, and they will learn something which they, which they now do not recognize. So far, we've just called together staff time to put this together. So we need to have those discussions with um, decision makers, budget committee, our advisory group. Did it come from the DEP? If there's a clear mandate. That's, a, that's one suggestion. Uh, getting back to your question on how to determine which locations are going to be monitored. Right now, we have priority areas identified, which are the fish bearing for perennial streams. There's going to have to be some, uh, you know, focus within there. But we're open to suggestions on, on where that will occur. You know, we'd like to get some, like you put it, random sample. So we have, we're seeing some diversity across the landscape. We're not just picking one and we're seeing some of the complexity that Mike's talking about, and that'll, that'll span different types of land uses. So when we sit down with the Watershed Council and our advisory group, you know, hashing through, as I put it, the, the details on exactly where that is gonna be. But, you know, there's different approaches. You take a random, there's the random sample approach, there's the specific stream reach approach. I'm leaning towards more of the random sample where you have the diversity of different land uses and, and stream types and so on and so forth. Questions or 